You may soon see an exploding star in the sky, but the Nova is still a long time coming. But don't worry, the chances of us witnessing it before the end of the year are extremely high. Today we will take a close look at where we will soon be able to observe a fascinating celestial event and when to expect the long overdue Nova of Tecorone Borealis. So make sure to stay until the end folks because you don't want to miss this. Welcome. Actually, it was supposed to start in September. Astronomers had already announced a spectacular nova explosion in the constellation Corona Borealis. But as is sometimes the case with astronomical predictions, the stars like to step out of line. If you want to be directly informed about such celestial events and also receive information as soon as the nova starts. So go ahead and subscribe. It's absolutely free. You'll never miss a video again and you'll help me immensely to reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. There are only a few missing, so I appreciate every subscription. Thank you guys. Tikrone Borealis, the name of our protagonist today, is a very special star, or rather a special pair of stars, because here a white dwarf and a red giant perform a cosmic dance that ends in a gigantic fireworks display about every 80 years. The last eruption was in 1946. Mathematically talented viewers will object right away. So the next Nova is not due until in two years. I have received this objection from you very often in the last few weeks, and that's why I wanted to address it more closely. These 80 years are an average. The interval between two such thermonuclear eruptions varies between 78 and 81 years. The astronomers pay attention to certain signs in order to determine the timing of the Nova precisely. To be precise, there are two signs, the high state and the pre-eruption dimming. In 2015, the star switched to a so-called high state, where it extensively fed on the material from its companion star, akin to a heavenly version of an all-you-can-eat buffet. This phase of increased activity typically occurs about 8 to 10 years before the nova. That fits. Astronomers observed during this phase that the star became noticeably brighter and exhibited stronger light fluctuations. This is because the white dwarf is increasingly siphoning material from its companion star, the red giant, and accumulating this material as a high-energy luminous accretion disk around itself. The reason why it is believed that the nova is imminent now is the addition of the second sign of dimming. Suddenly, the brightness of the white dwarf drops noticeably, not only in visible light, but also in the X-ray and UV range. This phenomenon was observed in T. Coronae Borealis in March 2023. All signs point to a nova. The white dwarf, the burnt-out remnant of a once normal star, is constantly stealing material from its companion, the red giant. Imagine you have a very greedy neighbor who, whenever you're not looking, bites off a piece of your garden fence, or something like that. At some point, this would likely have consequences, and that is exactly the case with T. Corona Borealis. The white dwarf accumulates material from its stellar neighbor until the pressure on its surface becomes so high that a thermonuclear explosion occurs. A nova is broken, and here we come directly to a widespread misunderstanding, nova. Novae and supernovae are often confused with each other, however, they are essentially two completely different events in a nova, only the surface of the white dwarf explodes, while the star itself remains intact. Therefore, repeated nova explosions can also occur, as is the case with T. Coronae Borealis, approximately every 80 years. The material that the white dwarf siphons from its companion accumulates like a kind of shell around it, and when enough material has been gathered and the pressure is high enough, this shell ignites in a massive thermonuclear reaction. The star itself is not destroyed, it simply appears temporarily much brighter. A supernova, on the other hand, is the final death throes of a massive star. Here, the entire star explodes, and at best a remnant, such as a neutron star or a black hole, remains. A supernova is also much brighter than a nova. The brightest nova will never be brighter than the brightest star in the night sky. A supernova, on the other hand, can become brighter, hold on now, than an entire galaxy for a short time. And while a nova, like T, Corona Borealis can recur, a supernova is the final end of a star. A final tremendous surge before the star extinguishes forever. And speaking of brightness, how bright will the nova of T, Corona Borealis, become? Normally, the star is so faint that it cannot even be seen with binoculars. It has an apparent brightness of about 10 magnitudes. For comparison, we can see stars down to 6 magnitudes with the naked eye. However, when the nova starts, it will grow to the second magnitude within a few hours, making it as bright as Polaris. 
That may not sound like the biggest show in the night sky, but remember that Polaris is one of the 50 brightest stars that we can see from Earth. T. Coroni Borealis thus suddenly appears to transform from a star that is barely visible through binoculars to one of the brighter objects in the night sky. And the best part is, we can follow this spectacle with the naked eye, which is very special, the double nova. Sounds like bossa nova, but has nothing to do with it. Unlike other novae, the show doesn't end after the first explosion. Instead, about six months after the violent main explosion, a second weaker nova follows, which with eight magnitudes less brightness delivers another cosmic spectacle. Why this white dwarf shows a double eruption is still an absolute mystery. Astronomer Bradley Schaefer says we have a high energy new mode of nova eruptions that presents us with a mystery and challenges theorists. Through the upcoming observation of the nova with modern telescopes, scientists hope to finally shed light, in the truest sense of the word, on the mystery of the double nova and decipher the cause of this rare effect. And they are counting on you as well. NASA has called for as many amateur astronomers as possible to already direct their telescopes at T, Coronae Borealis. The data collected by these citizen scientists from the early phase of the eruption will contribute a great deal to our findings, says NASA astronomer Rebecca Honzel. For that, we obviously need to know where we need to look. The nova will appear in the constellation of the Northern Crown, which is fortunately relatively easy to find. Look for a small semicircle of stars in the night sky that looks like a crown. The brightest star in this semicircle is called Gemma or Alphaca. The nova will then appear just below the lower edge of the crown and shine as brightly as Alphaca for several days. You can conveniently observe the constellation, as the name suggests, best from the northern hemisphere. In June, it was still very high in the sky, but even now in autumn, it is still very, very well visible. When it will exactly start, no one can say for sure. As mentioned, it was already announced for September, but that didn't work out. But it looks like it will start very soon. So keep a close eye on the star. It could happen any day, and it will happen at some point. Astronomers are observing it around the clock, and numerous space telescopes are already pointed at it. James Webb, Fermi, and Swift will observe the nova at different wavelengths. This is truly a unique opportunity so far, as there were no space telescopes during the last eruption 80 years ago. And to shorten the waiting time, let's talk about an earthly discovery that is at least as exciting. NASA has discovered something super fascinating under the ice of Greenland that has been lying there for millions of years. You can see the original footage from beneath the Greenland ice in the video displayed at the top right. Be sure to click on it, and if it takes longer than expected for the Nova explosion to happen, feel free to check out the other videos on the channel. There are lots of exciting topics, and every click helps me a lot. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.